The new word for Mac users is Centris, the new mid-range product line from Apple. And here to show us two new Centris models are Dave Dates again and Dave Limp of Apple. Dave, let's start with Dave number one over here. We just looked at the two low-end things, uh, the Classic, Color Classic, and the LC3. We're maybe going up 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks now. What do I get in the Centris line now I didn't get in the LC line? All right, the Macintosh Centris line is really targeted to mainstream business users and professionals. They're systems that are fast, flexible, and expandable. And they're bringing also some state-of-the-art microprocessor technology, Motorola 68040, into the mid-range now. So is this sort of the new Mac 2 line, essentially, the Centris? In, in essence, the mid-range of the product line is now the Macintosh Centris line. Okay, now you've got, your product is the, the Mac Centris 610. That's right. Okay, tell us about the machine and then show it off a bit. All right, the Macintosh Centris 610 is really a response, again, to customer demand and customer input. A lot of people do like the slimline design of the LC, so we tried to maintain that design language with the Macintosh Centris 610. Uh -huh. As you can see, it's low profile. On the other hand, multimedia is now a big uh, thing in the industry, so we're incorporating here in the middle a bay that can accommodate an internal CD-ROM player. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, it has the 040, as I mentioned. So the performance, if you're familiar with the 2CI, it's about two times the performance of the Macintosh 2CI. Oh. All right, well, show, show off the performance here. Run something right. that shows me how fast this is. Well, as you know, a lot of content is becoming digital now, and there's mm -hmm. a great application here by all this called Fetch, which allows you to easily catalog and retrieve digital content. So what I have here is little thumbnails of information I have stored, and I can open things up like a sound file just by double-clicking, and I can play the sound. So there's stereo sound out that's built into the Macintosh Centris 610. QuickTime movies are also something that people are really taking advantage of, so we can run a QuickTime movie directly here from mm -hmm. Elvis Fetch. And if I want to look at great images, lots of color, vivid colors, I can pull up an image and uh, take a look at it here. And once it's on the screen, I can cut and paste it and put it into any other application that I want. Okay, that's the 610. Let's turn to Dave Limp now and move up the line one more notch to the 650. What's the difference now? What do I get for going to the 650 rather than the 610 Centris, Dave? The Macintosh Centris 650 is more expandable and higher performance than the 610. It comes standard with three 32-bit wide new bus slots, mm -hmm. as well as a 68040 microprocessor running at 25 megahertz. That's about a 30% increase over the 610, and if you measure it against the Macintosh 2 CI, the 650 can perform up to three times yeah. as fast as a, six, as a CI. Dave Dates, let me turn back yeah. to you. On the expandability, I mean, Dave says three slots right. here. What do you get on the 610? Well, the Macintosh Centris 610 is really for people who want a highly responsive computer and don't want to pay for a lot of extra expansion slots. So we've built in support for Apple displays up to 21 inches. We've also built in Ethernet networking, so okay. there is a single expansion slot if people need other things as but well. But for expandability, you're talking 650 right. stuff. Right, and the 650 mm -hmm. continues to offer those same types of features, yeah. so you have Ethernet availability as well as a wide range of monitor support on board. All right, can we take a look at the 650? Sure. And uh, what's it telling me right now? Well, right now, this might be a, a problem for some users. The yeah, question you never like to see that question mark. <laughs> it says it's not finding a bootable device, but mm -hmm. if you go ahead and push that in, Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see an so I can just boot from the CD-ROM on this? Exactly. A lot of users uh, have a problem with uh, the number of disks that we have to ship to boot a modern computer these yeah. days. And if you're missing the middle disk in the group of, uh, of all the disks, the install may not go properly mm. and you can't finish it. So at Apple, we've used their tightly coupled hardware and software to give a bootable CD with all CD-ROM configurations. So all your system software, mm. all your utilities to repair your machine if it's, something has gone wrong, are available right on the CD-ROM. We, we really envision CDs going very, very far, and we're, we're shipping a, a huge number of CDs right now, and we think it's going to be the popular media uh -huh. of the 90s. All right, so what's going on here inside the 650 now? So what's happened is it's gone out and looked at the CD. It's booted up to the screen, and on the screen we have a, a simplified user interface called At Ease, mm -hmm. which Apple provides. And there's icons on every one of these folders here that allow you to either reinstall system software or perhaps... Uh, a fix your disk if something has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. For those users that are looking for the security of having the floppy disks with them, the second folder offers the ability to make backup copies of all your floppies so you can take them with you. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. What are we talking about now in price on the Centris line here, guys, on the 610 level? Well, the entry level configuration for the Macintosh Centris 610 has a suggested retail price of 1859 That's for a 4 megabyte 80 configuration. The monitor would be separate. Right. And the 650? Yeah, the step up to that would be 2699 for the Centra 650, which would uh, enable you, obviously, the more expandability, right. more, more performance. And is the Mac 2 line gone now? Yeah, these are basically coming in at the right. mid-range, offering additional price performance. In fact, the entry-level 68040 Macintosh used to be a Quadra 700 for yeah. over 4,000. Now with the Macintosh Centra 610, we brought yeah. it under 2,000. 
The yeah. 2VX will actually be part of the centrist line. We won't uh -huh. rename it, but it will be a part of this, the message. And as I mentioned earlier, it is upgradable to the 650, uh -huh. so people that buy the 2VX can upgrade. Okay. Well, speaking of which, coming up next, the new Quadra 800, so stay tuned. The new Quadra 800 is faster than the top-of-the-line 950, but less expensive than the older Quadra 700. Here to show us the power of the new Quadra 800, again, Dave Limp from Apple. All right, I guess we're getting up into, what, the four dollars $5,000 range now with the Quadra 800? Exactly. And what am I getting now for the extra money when I go to the Quadra 800 line? Yeah, a lot of our Quadra 700 customers that we went out and talked to before designing this computer, we asked, you know, what would they like to see to, uh, for a more, a more powerful computer? And they generally asked for more expandability, which I'm going to show you here in a second, okay. and more performance and functionality. So the 800 really steps up on what the 700 offered. We've increased the clock speed to a 33 megahertz 68040 mm -hmm. processor, which is the same processor found in the 950 and one of the fastest in the industry. On top of that, we've increased the speed of the graphics subsystem. So we have a full VRAM-based graphics system on this machine that allows support up to 21-inch monitors, and you will see thousands of colors on a 16-inch monitor. We've also increased the size and the performance of the hard disks that we offer from Apple. We support much, much faster bandwidth transfer between the hard drive and the main memory, as well as supporting 501 gigabyte drives from Apple. All right, you got something you can run on here to show us the speed of this baby? Absolutely. When you, when you tie all these things together, the fast processor, the SCSI, and the video, uh, we get a real tight level of integration. And QuickTime is becoming ever more popular as a desktop video standard. And so I've installed QuickTime on here, and I have a uh, familiar commercial That's loaded. very familiar. That was really 1984, right. I guess. Yeah, this January. The Super Bowl when you introduced the very first Macintosh. Yeah, this so January. We're almost coming. 10 years ago. Coming up on the uh, the ten year anniversary, right? Okay, kind of for, for just for fun, can we run the that old commercial? Absolutely. You have it all in QuickTime? It's all QuickTime. It's a seventeen megabyte file, and most personal computers to get quarter screen playback like this, this is maxing them out at, yeah. at the most most you can do. One of the nice things about the Quadra eight hundred is that we've gone even beyond that with this integration. So I can hit a command key here and actually get full six forty by four eighty display on the screen mm. at almost thirty frames per per second. So it's really really fast. I don't know why it's the end of this commercial. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great commercial. All right, uh, let's talk about the box. You're in the tower mode here, and you talked about expandability. Can you take it apart and show me what's inside? Sure, let me show you how it's uh, set up here. You'll turn it off first? Right. I guess that's, yeah. Don't try this at home? Exactly, and okay. we'll do a quick turn off here. So I'll pull the cables off here. Oh, somebody screwed this down. Let me just move it up okay, to the yeah. center. So it's based around a new mini tower design, and we've uh, continued on our use of plastic as well as metal to enclose mm -hmm. this, and thumb screws remove the back panel. And I just slide the top forward, and it becomes unscrewed, and I can remove the cover and set it aside. Maybe move, move that away from there. Okay. Bit, could, yeah. Okay, go ahead. And it's actually very deceivingly expandable. We have room at the top for a five and a quarter inch device. Here I've installed a CD-ROM, mm -hmm. but it could be a SyQuest drive or other removable media. Below that, we have room for our own floppy drive, which is a 1.44 megabyte floppy. Below that, we have room for a half-height hard disk drive. This is a 500 megabyte drive. And then we have room for either one full-height drive or two more half-height disk drives below that. Mm -hmm. So you can put a lot of devices internal. If we turn it to the side, you'll see that we've mounted the motherboard actually vertical in the enclosure. So without removing the power supply or any of the disk drives, we can drop the motherboard out and increase DRAM or VRAM without ever having to worry about any of the other pieces. Can you do that? Is it easy to drop that board out, or is that complicated? Uh, actually, all you would do is pull this. Uh -huh. not, it's not set I up see. Down, okay. So there's a screw in there. So. Okay. All right. Uh, you can sit down again for a second. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you, if uh, if you're a Quadra 700 owner, is there is there an upgrade to the 800? No, we weren't able to offer that because of the drastic change in plastics mm -hmm. and those types of things. One thing that is offered on the Quadra 700 is a processor direct slot. So a lot of third parties are offering up upgrades to 040s at 33 megahertz via that processor direct slot, and that's what it was actually designed for. And what's the difference now, then, again, between this and the 950, which the was 950. at the top of the line? Right. The 950 continues to remain in the top of the line as the most expandable Quadra. Uh -huh. It offers uh, five new bus slots versus three. It also s offers support for five and a quarter inch devices internal. So usually the biggest and the fastest hard drives appear in that first. Yeah. 
It also offers 24 bits per pixel. So if you want to do true color for image manipulation and those types of things, that'd be the choice the for you. Mm -hmm. Dave, thank you very much. That's our look at the new Macs. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Microsoft is gaining ground in establishing the Windows NT standard. Hewlett Packard has announced it will bundle NT with its new Pentium PCs. Compaq says it will support NT on several of its new computer systems. And there are reports that Motorola is licensing the NT operating system for use on its new PowerPC microprocessor. Lightning Computers is offering a 66 megahertz 486 PC for $999 with a trade-in of any 286, 386 Macintosh or Amiga system. The Lightning 486 includes 16K internal cache, a math coprocessor, 7 ISA slots, and 2 megs of RAM. Oki Data has introduced a new small footprint LED laser printer with a suggested list price of $699. The OL400E has a 32-bit RISC processor and does 300 DPI at 4 pages per minute. Aldis is shipping PageMaker 5.0 for the Macintosh. The new version of PageMaker features a new and faster printing engine, advanced text and graphics controls, and improved import-export capabilities. Aldis also announced the release of IntelliDrop 2.0 for both the Mac and Windows. Next up, this week's software review with Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, provided courtesy of CMP Publications. Today we're going to look at an electronic aquarium for DOS computers called Elfish. As we watch and listen to the opening screens, I'll tell you that there are several simple electronic fish bowls on the market. This one is the most clever and complicated. It can use the built-in speaker on your PC, but you'll get better sound with a soundboard. This program does much better if you run it on a muscular system, say a 386 or 486 with a fast disk. By the way, it takes a long time to load since it puts 180 files on your disk. When you're in the main menu, you'll notice your cursor becomes a swordfish, a cute touch. You can design fish, but first you have to catch them. You can control the evolution, breeding, and animation. You're also offered a number of options in tank design. When you're finished, you can certainly rest assured that you have one of the fanciest, most visually interesting electronic fish tanks available. The Moscow-based developers of this program call it creativity software, and they aren't kidding. Elfish is $60 from Maxis in Arenda, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. If you'd like to learn about OS2, Ziff Davis has a new book disc combination called PC Learning Labs Teaches OS2 2.1. It's designed for quick and easy OS2 fluency. It sells for $22.95. Belcor of New Jersey has announced a new system for online access to the New Jersey public libraries using Internet. The system, called MoreNet, will let students have direct access to 32 public and academic libraries throughout the state. And finally, if you like to make jokes about lawyers and other professionals, Microcomputer Resources has released an electronic book called Lowdown on Doctors, Lawyers, and Politicians. It includes nearly 800 quotes, quips, and witticisms. List price is $29. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer in...